most of these people who are my own personal mentors, who I loved and thought you know, were great, great people, I'm younger, they're older. And I became a medical doctor, and they lived longer and eventually passed away. And these people like Dr. Shelton, Dr. Vetrano, Dr. Sidwa, Dr. Burton, Dr. You know, Joy Gross, these individuals, either became, most of them became demented in later life. They mostly developed dementia or they developed Parkinson's disease. And they wow. were on plant-based diets, eating super healthfully, and the majority of them developed neurologic problems in later life. They didn't get cancer. They didn't have heart attacks. They didn't have foot amputations and kidney failure from diabetes, but they did get neurologic deficits. And so are you saying that, they lived long enough to get that or something they were doing caused it? Combat, th those two things both play a role. Most vegans, for uh -huh. example, that they're, who's omega-3, the majority of vegans and plant-based eaters have a deficiency of omega-3 fatty acids as represented by the omega-3 index. And these individuals who I checked as a physician at that point had exceedingly low omega-3 indexes. And there's been more than a dozen studies and every study testing this documents that low omega-3 index is associated with brain shrinkage and cognitive impairment. And low omega-3 index also increases the brain's susceptibility to damage from toxic chemicals that, that, that could promote Parkinson's disease. So I became very concerned about this and very interested in this, looking at all the studies and following this over the decades since I've, since I've observed that. And I was also in my practice in New Jersey, was one of the only physicians in the country taking care of vegan populations, plant-based eaters including the American Vegan Society, which was an hour away, you know, which had those members in the American Natural Hygiene Society were the early, um, you could say, early advocates or, or early um, adopters, early adopters of plant-based diets, of healthy plant-based diets. They weren't eating junk food plant-based diets. They weren't living on bread and, and rice and pasta and like, like, the, like the British vegans. They were eating super healthy diets that were based on fruits and vegetables, beans and nuts. So why are their omega-3s low? Because they're not eating fish? Yes, because they're completely off animal source omega-3s and they have taking no supplements of omega-3 fatty acids. And for most people, the conversion of, from green vegetables and walnuts and flax seeds, those conversion enzymes to make EPA and DHA is very genetically determined. And some people can make more and some people make less. And with nutritional gymnastics, you can sometimes get yourself to make a little bit more, but mostly it's genetics that, that, that determines that. So it's not every person on a plant-based diet gets a low omega-3 index, but the majority of people do get a low omega-3 index. So the majority is placing their brain at risk. It's not really a risk if you're going to die young like most Americans, because you're not going to get demented before the age of 80, or most people before the age of 80 anyway, when most Americans die. So the, prob the vegans that are denying that this is a problem are probably right when they're considering normal lifespan, but they're totally wrong when you're considering the extended lifespan potential of a person eating this way is not now 80 years old, it's now 100 years old. And if you're going to live to be over to 90, 95, 100, you're going to put your brain at risk if you don't take care of your omega-3 index. So we have- So what about the plant, the plant-based omega-3s? Like yes. uh, what, flax and like things like that, they, 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 they're no good? Well, I hear you, but what, what yeah. as you know, or as you may know, I sell the algae-based, the plant-based omega-3. That's the reason why I got into making it and selling it was because we utilizing it with my patients and family many, many years ago, it would taste rancid like gasoline. And a lot of people would yeah. feel it would say it tastes foul and they have indigestion. Yes, I, I gross. would have them analyzed to see the, to see the rancidity score. And I found that both fish oils and the algae oils develop rancid in proportion to the months they stayed at room temperature. So we developed them. We had a, we had a, then I started to invest in how to have my own brand made so we could have it refrigerated in glass bottles and sent to us in refrigerated trucks and we can keep it from becoming rancid and use fresh oils. So that's how I got into that, specifically so, to address the problem that vegans were having in later life from with neurologic deficits they were developing. So I had a huge, and, and then, you know, people are claiming, well, why don't you see, take more, eat more flax seeds, eat more walnuts. Well, like I'm saying, even though those contain ALA, which is a short chain omega-3, which is an important thing to take in your diet, because ALA is very protective against cardiac arrhythmias. And it's one of the reasons why some of these very well-known um, doctors who have advocates of using a cardiac, using a plant-based diet to reverse heart disease, some of them or a few of them were not recommending people eat nuts and seeds. And I was very concerned about that because... 
all the studies on the incorporation of nuts and seeds in plant-based populations showed longer lifespan, reduced heart and cardiovascular deaths in people utilizing nuts and seeds. And we found out the reasons now. We've seen the data now to show that ALA deficiencies, if you don't have enough ALA from nuts and seeds, it can increase the risk of cardiac arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. So, and an irregular heartbeat leading to sudden cardiac death. So there's definitely a mistake in there in the advocacy of make, making your diet extremely low, too low in fat. And it's the same thing with cancer. Let me just say this, that the same diet that prevents cancer is best for a person who has cancer. So many people believe falsely that yes, it's good to eat nuts and seeds, except for when you have advanced heart disease, then it's best to take them out of your diet. That's not true. It's the same diet that's healthiest for people who, who are to prevent heart disease is the same most effective way we prevent, we reverse heart disease when people have it already. It's not more advantageous to pull all the fat out of the diet when you have heart disease. But it's true, we have to watch calories and make sure people are losing weight every week, but we don't do it by taking all the nuts and seeds out. So having some omega-3 fatty acids from nuts and seeds is important, but it still doesn't give you an omega-3 index above six. You need an omega-3 index above six. So you're Ooh. saying the, um, the algae sources of omega-3s, those we can absorb directly and it doesn't have to go through the same conversion process. Correct, yes. because it's not, we're not taking a short chain fatty acid like ALA and converting it into EPA and then DHA. The conversion is a very small percent. You only convert about one or 2% of the ALA into EPA and DHA wow. anyway. And if you conversion factor, so, that, and so, we, so you adjust this. What I recommend is we adjust the dose of the, dot, the DHA to optimize the omega-3 index. And I used to tell people that above four was adequate, but now over the more research done, we're finding that above five and probably even above six is, is, is even better. So we're trying, so I'm personally bringing my level a little higher of recent years because they've shown that um, more lifespan, more quality of life if you're living longer by maintaining a higher omega-3 index, more resilience and protection of the brain as we, as we age. So, you, you know, I've faced opposition and attacks on this against, because there are some people that see a plant-based and vegan eating as such, with such religious fervor that they see any kind of thing that's, that's discussing maybe a, a weakness of a vegan diet as an attack against them and their philosophy. And they try to discredit the source or try to say that, oh, here's a reason why this could cause that, that's gonna cause a problem if you take that. And, they, and the reason they could sometimes do that and confuse people is because if you take too much fish oil, that could have negative effects. If you're taking like three to four grams of fish, and just because studies taking excessive amounts of fish oil is, is negative, doesn't mean that allowing deficiencies is, is positive. So people get very confused with almost any nutrient, there's a sweet spot, whereas too little or too much could, be, could, be neg could have a negative effect.